What's up guys? It's Yo Boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn in Naruto as Nara and Uzumaki? Part 7. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. Actually, the local medicine here is two-thirds focused exclusively on treating wounds after or during battles, rather than the full range of services typically available in hospitals from my previous world. The exception here is Tsunade, who didn't limit herself to available knowledge and conducted her own research, which allowed her to combat Chiyo's poison so effectively. Well, now he won't bother you for at least a few more months, I reported satisfactorily while the manager adjusted her bandage. Thank you, Ryokuen. Don't mention it, Sasaki-san, I help where I can, I nodded in response to her deep bow. You can just call me Suzuka, the manager sighed with feigned annoyance, how many times do I have to repeat that? Considering your merits, quite a while, I replied in the usual manner, smiling back. It's a routine we repeat each time. And I truly respect this crippled woman a lot, surviving encounters with three enemy Kage, albeit not simultaneously, face-to-face -face in battle isn't something everyone can do, and that's just what I've heard about her adventures, not including classified ones. Would you like a cup of tea perhaps? I have your favorite cookies here. Unfortunately, not this time, business won't allow me to stay long, so I must bid farewell, I declined with noticeable regret. They really do bake delicious cookies here. Take care of yourself and our wards, she bid me farewell. Hopefully, next time I'll have more free time, our rascals have been pestering me with, when will Ryo and I Isan come? I think I can create a clone for a few hours of active play next time, I smiled in response. After a slight bow, I turned and walked towards the door, leaving behind a small chubby envelope on the chair. Another established tradition. But at the threshold, I suddenly stopped. Oh, by the way, Suzuka-san, if I happen to come across a suitable eye after one of my troublesome missions, would you be interested? Startled after finally hearing her name, the manager froze in place upon hearing such an unconventional offer. Of course, organ surgery and transplantation in Kanoha are conducted under the table, and targeted hunting for spare parts is highly frowned upon, unlike in Kiri. But if it's not prohibited and doesn't result in punishment, why not help a good person using another missing mean or bandit? I am interested, the former Kunoichi squeezed out after a pause. That's the answer I wanted to hear, I beamed and disappeared from the office. Outside, I created a shadow clone to play with the kids while I left the shelter's premises. Now, visiting the others will meet this month's quota. Dotan, Mogurigakur no Jutsu. With a small chakra release, I sank knee deep into the earth and froze in that position. Damn, why can't I get this right? Pulling out my legs, I stepped aside and formed the necessary seals again. Dotan, Mogurigakur no Jutsu. Again, I sank only knee deep and stopped there. Damn it, what am I going to do? It's just not working. It's been half a day since I tried to learn this relatively simple but very useful C-rank Dotan Jutsu, but the movements are nowhere to be seen. And the problem isn't even the amount of chakra I'm releasing, which I have enough of, it's something else. The wall technique goes up quite well for me, but this jutsu just won't yield. The reason hasn't been understood yet. Could it require a greater affinity with the element, not just chakra? If so, that's bad, because ways to quickly disappear from the battlefield are absolutely necessary. Shunshin is relatively easy to trace, but movement underground won't be detected by every sensor. Well, except for half of Iwa's shinobi, but there are still three other great villages, not to mention the smaller ones or even samurai and monks. And considering my chakra volume, hiding underground will be even more effective than just plain vanishing. Hey folks, how's it going? I called out to the clones busy with the same task. So far, same old, shrugged the nearest one. I have a theory, chimed in another. 
Despite this Jutsu's low level, it requires deeper manipulation of chakra into Dotan and spreading it through the surrounding earth. And why is that important? Transformation is still done through seals, I shrugged. True, but here it's not just transformation, it's also about controlling the release transformed chakra, and we're not doing so well with that. Hmm, true. Looking at it from that angle, burrowing into the ground requires control, I scratched my head, grasping the idea. I don't think we'll master the technique quickly, but with each attempt, we manage to sink a bit deeper, observe the same clone. By a couple of millimeters, I confirmed grimly, how much longer until we can use it properly this way. Well, we've struggled with fire and wind jutsu a lot too, but we did achieve results eventually, so why don't you go focus on something more productive while we keep plowing ahead? Alright, I'll go check on Saya. I love my clones, especially when they have the right attitude. Hmm, not bad looking cream at all. I plucked a couple from the tree and popped them into my mouth. Yum yum. Juicy and sweet to taste. I think it's time to harvest part of the crop and start making some liqueur. Considering the tree has grown significantly in just three years, the harvested yield should now be enough not only for eating. Just learning about the scarcity of local alcohol production, I immediately got the idea of making moonshine for personal use. Fortunately, making vodka at home for a few Fuinjutsu user isn't particularly difficult, and I've been familiar with the process for a long time in detail, especially since there are plenty of trees around. However, I definitely didn't enjoy drinking vodka or even sake neat, but various tasty cocktails. Now that's something else. So convincing Ma to plant plums in our garden as an addition to apples, cherries, apricots, and peaches turned out to be easier than expected. The first proper harvest came out just last year, when I managed to make the first bottle of plum liqueur. Making it isn't much of a hassle, press some ripe plums, add sugar, and pour in some vodka. Just have to wait a month or two, and voila, plum liqueur that beats many liqueurs in taste, and it's completely natural. I even thought about starting an alcohol production, but then discarded the idea, let this drink be a reminder of my past home. Unfortunately, the locals here don't really appreciate the idea of drinking, sake is the most popular way to unwind and relax. Well not surprising with such a profession. For me, alcohol serves as a nerve tonic and something tasty during celebrations. If I'm going to drink something it has to be delicious and inherently beneficial or at least not too harmful. And for that, a little effort is required. With such an excellent tool as chakra at my disposal, even the simplest process can be spiced up with a bit of imagination. So far, I've only shared my moonshine making experiments with Ma, but she really enjoyed it. Perhaps it's best not to offer tasting to anyone else, they'll demand more, and I only have a couple of bottles in reserve for emergencies, the rest gets quickly dispatched in family circles for various occasions. Saya even stopped buying sake, although she used to enjoy polishing off a bottle or two for a melancholic mood or while browsing through her old photos with Ryota. Hey Ryo Kuen. The clear call made me startle and snap out of my thoughts. Stopping, I turned around and saw amidst the crowd a little girl with long black hair and silver eyes, dressed in the everyday attire of the Hyuga clan, waving at me. Oh, Hitomi-chan, hello, I greeted her, approaching closer. Hello, Ryo Kuen, she shyly smiled, and I can tell it's you by the red streak in your hair, differentiating you from the Aburame. You should just look at the height, I smirked, then you'll definitely recognize me. What brings you here? Haven't seen you in the village in six months. I've been mostly caught up with clan duties, rarely going on missions and mostly looking after the little ones and training. How about you? Nothing new, just continuing my work at the hospital as usual, I shrugged, though a few months ago, I started taking on higher level missions, chasing away bandits, dealing with rogue ninjas, and even faced a couple of B ranks. Oh oh. We're still on C ranks, Hugo rounded her mouth amusingly, Sensei says it's too early for us to handle anything more serious. Well, if Sensei says so, we should listen, I nodded wisely. Hey, Hitomi-chan, let's sit down at a cafe instead of standing around here. My treat. Ignoring her shy objections, I linked my arm with hers and led her to the nearest open table. I wasn't particularly close with most of my academy classmates, but the little shy Hyuga had firmly settled into my heart as a friend, 
which wasn't common among shinobi. Considering that out of five Hyuga clan members, she was the only one I could have a normal conversation with, says a lot. Besides, she's too timid and shy for anyone to try anything with her. That made our conversations even more enjoyable. Since graduation, time had been kind to her, and the angular little girl had blossomed into a charming young lady. It's a pity that the hectic life of a shinobi doesn't allow regular meetings with all friends and acquaintances, otherwise, I would gladly meet with this classmate. By the way, she's the only classmate at the academy who has seen me without a mask and glasses. Order whatever you like, Hitomi suggested, seating herself at a free table and gesturing for the waitress, and don't you dare refuse, or I'll be offended. Ryukuyuan. Hyuga made a displeased face, but her blushing cheeks betrayed her. Yeah, yeah, you can consider this a date, I replied, taking off my glasses and grinning widely, after all, Kachan would scold me if she found out I let a girl pay for herself. Especially since for quite some time now, I've been fulfilling all of Saya's wishes without any objections. How are things in your team? Are your teammates treating you well? Asked the lip person girl, wanting to change the subject. Lecherous goats, she suddenly blurted out. Huh? The change in mood caught me off guard. They spy and crack indecent jokes. Hyuga complained. And that darn dog always tries to stir up trouble. Ah, right, in her team, there's that one guy from the Inazuka clan and another from a smaller clan allied with Sarutobi. I haven't interacted closely with them, but they seem to behave fine in the academy. Maybe hormones are acting up? It's that time for 14-year-olds, after all. So what's the problem? A couple of painful hits to the Tenketsu and the problem is solved, I suggested. If only that helped, Hitomi snorted indignantly, every sparring in Taijutsu turns into an excuse to grope. It's gotten old, and they even ignore Sensei's warnings. Who's your Sensei? Hadashi Sensei, she's a Jonin not from our clan, but still strong, the Kunoichi exhaled with admiration in her eyes. Well, then it's understandable why the Jonin is inactive, where would a non-clan member interfere against two clan boys? Just a little overstepping and there will be a lot of trouble. It's quite a common phenomenon in the village, where clans hold all the power. And for Hyuga from a side branch of the Hyuga clan, no one will stand up, because they don't care about such petty antics, and she has no parents or brothers to support her. I guess I'll have to deal with this myself, until these idiots cross the line of impunity. In that case, you won't mind if I take care of this and set those two idiots straight? Won't you have problems with their clans if you interfere? The Kunoichi asked anxiously. At that moment, our order arrived, and we had to pause to assess the quality of the fruit salad and ice cream balls. Mixing everything together, I quickly cleaned my plate and watched as Hyuga nibbled on her portion. When she noticed my intense gaze, she blushed and lowered her eyes back to her plate. Hitomi belonged to that rare type of girls who didn't possess striking beauty but were extremely sweet and homely. One just wants to grab and hug her. What problems? They can complain about a regular shinobi, but it won't help against me, I waved off, besides, if they persist, I'll threaten to castrate them, then they definitely won't be interested in girls. Hyuga nearly choked at such a statement, staring at me with wide open eyes. Well, with her silvery color and complete lack of distinguishable pupils, it didn't look quite like with ordinary people. Ah, why can't sensei handle things like this? Maybe I'd given a couple of times to that sweetly frightened face. Ah, well, don't let it come to that, she muttered uncertainly, once again lowering her gaze to the ice cream as if trying to hide behind her short bangs. Well, maybe it won't come to that, but I intend to clearly and firmly demonstrate to your two teammates that there's someone to stand up for you, I waved off, besides, there are a couple of other ways to make them listen to my opinion. Namely, Inazuka. By the way, will you see them today? It's already noon, and I'm keeping you here. No no, we're meeting at 2, since we didn't take any missions this morning and I wanted to just stroll through the shops. Aha, uh -huh, and here I caught her, or rather, she successfully noticed me. Besides Rotaro and Tsum, I've only communicated with her somewhat after the academy, and two-thirds of the class I haven't seen in the village at all or even from afar, or in one of the bars where Sensei likes to drag us. True, after the first time, no one tries to do this, having enough sense to politely decline Kanade's attempts to have fun at our expense. Ryo Kuen, what kind of sensei do you have? 
I noticed someone from our clan, but didn't have time to see their faces, the girl's voice interrupted my thoughts. Turning my attention to her, I wiped the ice cream off my face and noted Hitomi's satisfied expression. Sweet tooth! We have Sensei Kanade Hyuga, from a side branch of your clan, I informed her, and how come you don't know about her? From the same branch, and considering women's penchant for gossip, you must have at least crossed paths. I smirked suggestively, pleased to see the girl blush and shyly look away. I don't know if all the girls in class regularly gossip and share all sorts of rumors about the local medical genius. Me, that is. In any other case, undoubtedly, but I'm not fond of gossiping with older women about potential targets for hunting, especially when it comes to enhancing the clan's prosperity, Hitomi replied, trying to maintain her composure, but her blazing red cheeks and ear tips betrayed her completely. I hope you're not placing bets on me there? I joked. It's clear that the Kunoichi is aware of her clan leadership's plans regarding me, and she's trying not to shine a light on the topic, lest she herself end up trying to climb into my bed, transitioning from friends to lovers. Something I'd rather avoid. I haven't, and I don't know about others, Hyuga smiled mischievously, playing along with my joke, then grew a bit more serious. Anyway, you should watch out for Kanade. What do you mean? I didn't understand. I don't know about her, but her mother in our clan is quite a famous hunter for wealthy suitors and has brought the clan a lot of money and land from two deceased husbands, the girl warned, and I doubt she won't try to arrange her daughter next to such a coveted piece like you. A hunter? You mean she marries and then conveniently her husbands meet their end? I hadn't thought they could be guilty of that here too. Something like that, but nothing criminal, both died of heart failure in bed, the girl chuckled, after all, it's hard for an ordinary person to keep up with a shinobi's stamina, especially if he's also of a certain age. Damn, now I understand where she picked up her habits from sensei, and here I was wondering who she consults with if she's still a virgin herself. You can tell right away with enough close contact, and some of Kanade's seduction techniques I couldn't even learn from friends, usually, shinobi and kunoichi suffer from either straightforwardness or excessive shyness on this issue. I'll keep that in mind, but I already try to stay away from clan women, I sighed, shaking my head, especially when they're already looking for a suitable political bride for me. So, you're getting married soon, the kunoichi gasped. Did I detect notes of disappointment in her voice? Not now, not even in a year, I wave my hand in denial, only when I turn 18, so I still have four years ahead. Besides, the question of the candidate isn't settled yet, and so far there's only a rough list of the most likely brides. Is that so? Yeah, maybe I'll find a suitable girl for myself before that time, I sighed, not particularly enjoying the raised topic. Hitomi noticed this and tactfully changed the subject to the affairs of those classmates she had seen and the rumors circulating in the village about frontline combat. In appreciation, I got her another scoop of ice cream. In the end, we just chatted for half an hour and silently agreed not to bring up two sensitive topics. By the time it was two, I caught up with Hitomi at the training ground. Her team was already gathered, so approaching, I could assess the quite significantly stretched out guys, whom I remembered as snotty brats barely reaching my chest, and their jonin, a woman well past her second decade and confidently approaching her third. In my estimation, around 28. Dressed in standard attire, she didn't stand out much externally, falling under the category of merely slightly attractive, with a good figure but without outstanding feminine charms. For Kunoichi, this is usually standard. Of course, you can't judge much with a vest, but she's definitely not Tsunade's size. There are plenty of them in the crowd, and their eyes don't stand out. Only the whole appearance of a grey mouse was spoiled by a broken nose, an ugly scar above the left eyebrow, left by something blunt, a staff, nunchucks, judging by the jagged edges, and the piercing gaze of intelligent light grey eyes. Sometimes a single eye-to-eye -eye glance is enough to determine if there are brains inside someone's head. Well, this woman certainly had plenty of them. Good day, I greeted everyone, nodding my head slightly. And good day to you too, Nara-san, the Jonin nodded, not that I'm chasing you away, but we have training planned right now. Where you'll be a hindrance, remained unsaid. Straight to the point? Fine by me. Oh, I won't take up much of your time, I waved my hand, I just need to talk to your students about, 
the inadmissibility of certain actions towards my friends. If I spoke respectfully to Sensei Hadashi, then at the end of my sentence, casting a glance at a couple of wary genins, my voice dropped so coldly that even an idiot would understand the threat contained in it. The jonin just chuckled approvingly, looking at her student. Perhaps that's a worthy reason to postpone training a bit, she smirked, I hope they'll be able to move independently by the end of this discussion? Absolutely, Hadashi-san. And if not, I can always heal them to the necessary condition. Excellent, and you can just call me Kyo-san. Then I'm just Ryo. With mutual chuckles, she and I completely ignored the startled simultaneous exclamation of Sensei and the dumbfounded expressions of the Genins. The Kunoichi pulled Hitomi along, and I was left alone with the pale-faced boys. Well, no wonder they paled, back in the academy, I could knock down all my classmates literally in a matter of seconds without even trying. So, gentlemen, your hormones acting up? Fond of harassing orphans? Since there's no one to defend them, you thought you'd feel up a pretty partner? To your misfortune, she has one big and very angry friend. I ominously uttered, clenched my fists dramatically, and took a step forward. Hey, hey, wait, Ryo, Inazuka quickly interposed with his palms raised. What the hell are you meddling in here? Yeah, we haven't harmed anyone, and your unwarranted interference could lead to serious trouble for Nara, the second idiot quickly picked up the idea. Of course, they'll try to pressure me with clan affairs, since they don't stand a chance against me together. Exactly, you don't want to incur the wrath of three clans against Nara, do you? Idiots. Barely restraining the urge to facepalm, I just shook my head. For such weaklings, no one would even raise an eyebrow, just like with Hitomi. If they were heirs or from a ruling family, that would be different. But this lot brought it upon themselves, so they'll pay the price. Without wasting more time listening to them, I switched to more forceful methods of education on how not to behave with my acquaintances. The idiots didn't last even three minutes, though it's a much better result than in the academy. You can tell right away they had a good instructor, or rather, instructress. Surveying the bodies groaning on the ground, I just shook my head and approached closer, lifting their heads by their hair. Listen carefully to me, and don't say later that you didn't hear, if Hitomi complains about you again, I'll mix you up with the dirt and sterilize you like the sheep you are, I quietly issued the warning, shaking their heads a bit for better understanding, and turned to the ringleader in this pair, and as for you, Tsum once invited me over, so mentioning your behavior to her parents won't be difficult for me. Imagine what the head of a clan, whose daughter is growing up under his care, would do to you. P please, no. I understand everything, the genin whispered, practically turning pale with horror. Good, and remember, there won't be a second warning, I released my grip, stood up straight, and turned to the kunoichi who had just approached, they're all yours, without a single fracture, fully capable of continuing training from here until late at night. Excellent work. I hope I can invite you again for a demonstration match using taijutsu if my students decide to take their studies lightly again, the jonin smirked cunningly. The response came in the form of two groans, leaving me only to nod. It was nice to meet you, but now I must be going, I decided to take my leave after finishing my business. See you again, Hitomi-chan. Waving to the happily smiling Hyuga, I turned around and headed towards the village. Ma is probably waiting, and I should relieve her at the shop, at least for lunch. Emerging onto the road from the fairly large training area reserved for the Genin teams, I briskly moved towards the gates. But just as I was about to reach them peacefully, a shadow flickered across the ground. Tilting my head up to the sky, I spotted a hawk circling above. Hm. Extending my hand, I caught the dropped message and, after confirming the intended recipient, unfolded it, breaking the wax seal. The scroll contained only a few lines. Scanning through them, I grimaced. Damn it. Ma and Mito-chan will not be pleased at all. Hiruzen Sarutobi relaxed with enjoyment in his rightful Hokage chair and leisurely filled his pipe. In recent years, moments like this were rare due to the necessity of personal presence at the front lines during the wars. However, now that he had returned to the village, he could allow himself a small weakness. Yet, that didn't mean he couldn't combine business with pleasure. Hiruzen glanced at his companions, now seated across from him, and silently chuckled, war didn't come easy to anyone, and his old comrades were definitely beginning to falter. 
Danzo lost an eye and sustained serious injuries, having missed an unexpected attack, while Hamura and Koharu simply couldn't handle the strain, noticeably weakening over their time as advisors. Among the four original students of the first Hokage present, only he retained enough strength to avoid even minor injuries during combat operations. Just a few scratches. Puffing on his pipe, Sarutobi allowed himself to bask a little in his own self-satisfaction. Hiruzen? Koharu couldn't endure the prolonged silence. Yes, I suppose we can begin, Hiruzen emerged from his thoughts, nodding as Hokage. What urgent matters do we have concerning Kanoha? Before arranging the meeting, the advisors had enough time to delve into a few neglected village matters. Food suppliers are unreasonably hiking prices on provisions, citing increased attacks on country roads, forcing them to hire more guards, Hamura promptly reported. Prices were inevitably going to rise, but not by twice the amount. Although, the shortage of patrols is blatantly encouraging various ruffians hoping to make a profit at others' expense. Mitokado refrained from mentioning that it was precisely Hiruzen who decided to leave such a small contingent of shinobi in Kanoha that bandits had completely run amok. Even regular fresh recruits from the academy couldn't stabilize the situation for long, natural attrition and sending reinforcements to the front lines constantly diminished the effectiveness of the remaining forces in Kanoha. Patrols simply couldn't keep up with the double workload, sometimes perishing simply due to the inability to fully recover after yet another battle. With one front closing, this problem will resolve itself, Sarutobi exhaled smoke. What else? The clans are dissatisfied, losses in the war with Suna were too great, and the shortage of Chunin has seriously impacted those who fought, Koharu frowned. Among the survivors, unrest of various kinds is beginning to stir. Considering that they repeatedly thwarted attempts to increase funding for the Chunin program against the hopes of the medical corps, the dissatisfaction was entirely justified. How strong is the dissatisfaction? Sarutobi frowned. Such news did not particularly please him, this could easily lead to a vote of no confidence in the village council, making it more than problematic to hold on to his beloved seat. So far, just hints that my people managed to smooth over in time, but such a trend is worrisome, Danzo replied. We can soon send the main troublemakers to the front with IWA or even better, with AIM, where their chances of perishing will be somewhat higher. Perhaps that's what we'll do, but only after some rest, otherwise, there will be even more dissatisfied, the Hokage nodded. What else? Since the beginning of the war, medicine procurement has decreased almost fivefold by decision of the civilian council, and the hospital simply lacks medications for proper treatment and recovery of the wounded. You can imagine the consequences, Hamura reported promptly. The reason? A deficit in the village budget. What deficit, if this expense item is covered by the reserve fund? Hiruzen looked surprised at the Kunoichi. Which has bottomed out, although it was supposed to provide financial support to the hospital for at least three more years, Koharu nodded, but the civilian part of the council spent that money on their own projects. Execute the merchants and confiscate their property. Danzo slammed the armrest of his chair. They've completely run wild during our absence. We cannot start internal strife within the village while there's a war going on, Sarutobi frowned, taking a drag from his aromatic smoke. Hold the accountable parties responsible for the amount spent and issue a warning that there won't be a next time. Let them remember that this is a village of shinobi, not the domain of a daimyo where lawlessness can thrive. Koharu quickly began jotting something down in her notebook. Anything else? Nothing particularly urgent or important right now, and the rest can be discussed at the general council meeting, Hamura shrugged. Right now, our forces need a break, and then we can finally deal with Iwagakure first, and then aim. What about the Jinchuriki? Danzo interjected. My watchers report that Achiha and Nara are constantly hovering around her. Hmm, Achiha Makoto was one of the best friends in the academy, and Ryo Nara is a student of Midosama, Sarutobi informed. During this time, he had already skimmed through ANBU reports and was therefore aware of the situation. We need to remove them from the vessel and urgently find a suitable candidate to increase our influence on the weapon, or at least reduce the influence of clan representatives, Shimura grimaced irritably. Nothing can be done about Uchiha until she graduates from the academy, 
and showing excessive interest is dangerous, but as for Nara, I've already taken care of it, Sarutobi flicked ash from his pipe, setting it aside and folding his hands on his stomach, looking attentively at the advisors. As for influence, Mito-sama's presence complicates our options significantly, but thanks to Jiraiya, I already have a suitable candidate in mind. That's good, but I hope your method isn't too radical? Hamira worried, immediately clarifying. We already have few talented medical nin, and depriving the village of talent on the level of Tsunade would be too extravagant. Mitokado modestly omitted that it was thanks to Nara's talent that they managed to save a Kunoichi who was important to him, earning quite a few points from the advisor's side. Level of Tsunade? Koharu raised an eyebrow questioningly. Isn't that a bit presumptuous? Senju is a true genius in medicine, and comparing her to some newcomer? Newcomer? Now it was her neighbor's turn to raise an eyebrow. Considering the fact that he started working in the hospital at the age of seven, when Tsunade at that age wasn't even an apprentice, not to mention the beginning of a full-fledged medical nin career, then here we can argue with the statement, who is a genius. Ryo Nara will simply be sent to the front with IWA, Haruzen interrupted the brewing argument. And everything will be in his hands there. He modestly omitted that Ryo Nara's team would be enrolled in assault units fighting on the front lines, rather than being assigned to support roles, as is often the case with teams including a genin. Eventually, such a talented shinobi could grow into a force to be reckoned with, significantly adding political weight to the Naras and their allies. Given the minimal influence over him, it was best to remove him discreetly, leaving no traces in their direction, family ties to the young genius were too unpleasant, capable of causing many problems. If he perished in war, so be it. He proved insufficiently strong, with no grievances towards the Hokage. One more genin, one less, there was no significant difference. We'll conclude our meeting here, I won't detain you any longer, Sarutobi informed the advisors, sighing as he began sorting through stacks of papers on the table. I still have this paperwork to read late into the night. He also pondered what to do about Senju, they had amassed too much influence lately, and their heir openly expressed a desire to become Hokage. Considering the personalities of the first two and the fact that Senju Nawaki was a direct descendant of Hashirama and Toborama, if he were to perish in one of the skirmishes, the founders would surely quiet down for a while. Orochimaru was quite capable of presenting this as an unfortunate accident, orchestrating a plausible scenario for his remaining two students, for which he could provide materials for research and some funding for promising projects. A small bonus would be the opportunity to humble Tsunade a bit, as lately she had become too arrogant under the influence of her newfound fame. She absolutely refuses to heed the wishes of her wise teacher, and such behavior should be punished. So, you only have a month? Saya sighed sadly, scanning a few lines on the scroll. Considering that I've already spent quite a lot of time in Kanoha since graduation, this was to be expected, I shrugged, comfortably settled on the couch and watching her pacing around the living room irritably. With the troop redeployment, it was quite predictable that they would assign our team with our track record to reinforcement. Yes, but you've only recently graduated and still remain a genius. Sending geniuses to the front lines. Yeah, recently, almost two years already. That's why I think right before the Hokage's departure, he'll present us with field commissions and Chunin vests. We've had enough missions for promotion, not to mention the heads of destroyed Nukunins. I'm not happy about it at all. Saya even stamped her foot. At least now you understand a bit how I felt when I had to send you off to service, not even on the Hokage's orders, but out of personal foolishness. I snapped irritably. At my statement, she blushed swiftly and pouted like a little girl, turning her back with an indistinct sound. Chuckling, I swiftly moved from the couch to her and tightly embraced the surprised Saya with my arms, then returned her back to the seat and moved her to my knees. Given the difference in size, her crown hardly reached my chin and she seemed extremely small and fragile. Well, what are we so worried about? I quietly asked, inhaling her familiar and beloved scent. Unlike you, I'm not rushing to be a hero, I'm not trying to become one, and it's better for me to escape in an unfavorable case than to stay and die for some village advantage. Jenin don't belong on the front lines. I understand that perfectly well, but all sorts of things happen in war, 
and sometimes there's simply nowhere to run when enemies are all around, turning sideways, Ma looked me in the eyes. Ryuta became a victim of the approaching war, and I'm afraid you won't escape this fate, leaving me alone. Staring into eyes so similar to my own green ones, I smiled, saying nothing, and simply held the most precious person closer to me. What's the point in just shaking the air when we both know I'll do everything possible and impossible to return home? What? Quite taken aback, all I could do was stare dumbfoundedly at Lin Li sitting opposite me and blink stupidly. I never expected such a small request from her. I'm asking if you'll agree to be the father of my child, Senju repeated calmly. But, how, why me? I managed to blurt out, completely thrown off balance. I did have other options, but both shinobi I like died in the war, my friend smiled sadly, considering I have no true friends left, and there's simply no one to marry, you're the last option to avoid dying as an old maid without children. Of course, she exaggerated about being an old maid, she looked too good for a 30-year-old woman, but such a desire was somewhat understandable. Alright, that's clear. And I won't even ask about the age gap between us. Tell me, why did you decide to have children now? Sighing, the kunoichi looked up at me, and I had to make a great effort not to flinch from the overwhelming sadness in her gaze. Firstly, you're soon going off to war and who knows when or if you'll come back at all. And secondly, if I have to return to the front again, this war will be my last, I'm sure of it. But if I get pregnant during leave, I can leave the service on legitimate grounds. And live on a meager allowance? I skeptically remarked. That won't be a problem, I've earned enough to comfortably support a future family, Lin Li shook her head. Alright, but what about the fact that we're both from clans? I doubt the elders and clan heads would refuse to secure a future shinobi with inheritance from such parents. Considering Ma had been buzzing in my ears about the extreme undesirability of offspring in other clans and the ensuing political hassle, it was clear I was worried. We'll just keep your fatherhood a secret, and I'll tell the elders to go to hell if they start pressuring. And you can continue visiting me just as friends, Senju smiled, sensing that I was already not opposed to the idea. These things shouldn't be decided right away, Linchon, I sighed, feeling my rational side gradually giving in, insisting that such an offer would only bring me trouble. Let me carefully consider your proposal, and I'll let you know my decision tomorrow, okay? In principle, only a complete impotent could refuse an offer from a woman like Lin Li, who I found quite attractive, and I've been ready for children for the past 50 years. But the complications with Saya, if she finds out, will be huge. And I shouldn't forget about Nara either. Damn, everything's so complicated. Alright, it's too much to ask for an immediate answer from you, my friend agreed lightly, adding, don't worry, whatever your answer, you'll still remain my friend. Then I'll go think about it, I sighed with relief. After bidding farewell to Senju, I immersed myself in thoughts, such an important question couldn't be decided by myself alone, especially under the influence of Lin Li's demonstrated virtues and the call of ancient instincts to seize and take control, especially over something so strong in a young body. Therefore, it's worth seeking advice from relatively interested parties. And here I have just two options, Saya and Mito. Asking Saya about grandchildren is scary, what if she decides to kill the theoretical mother? I've long noticed her somewhat jealous attitude towards my presumed partners, giving a very characteristic squint at any mention. On the other hand, the Uzumaki has a lot of life experience behind her, and it's quite possible she'll provide sound advice on this matter. So it's decided, I'm going to Mito. She should be home right now, and Kushina is at the academy which means there will be a little time just for the two of us. Just before reaching the exit from the founder's quarter, I turned around and strode purposefully towards my lover's house. Hmm, you've asked me an interesting question, Mito frowned, trailing her finger along my chest. But the answer should definitely be positive. Positive? And why did you decide that? I chuckled, relaxedly lounging on the bed and pulling the naked beauty closer to me. Shouldn't you, on the contrary, feel jealous of another competitor aiming to get into my bed? If it were someone else, maybe. But with Linchon, I just feel sorry for her and want her to get her piece of happiness. Considering her life hasn't been easy, it would be foolish to feel jealous, Mito explained. Hmm? I stirred, shaking off drowsiness, it intrigued me to hear about Lin Li's life. I won't tell you everything, 
Just some facts, warned Uzumaki, noticing my interested gaze. I nodded in agreement. She was orphaned early, at the age of two, when her parents died on a mission and she had no other relatives. She grew up under the clan's care and, like many orphans, became a shinobi. Despite her lively and cheerful character, she found it hard to make true friends, and people were dying quickly back then. At her current age, there are only about 20 clan members left. At 17, Linchan seemed to be headed for marriage with a Sarutobi, but the groom was literally killed a month before the scheduled date. Then came participation in the First Shinobi World War, followed by constant high-rank missions and now this one. She has almost no friends, her rare attempts to start a family ended sadly, and by the age of 25, she had given up on them altogether. Perhaps you're the only living friend among all those she knows, so why bring a stranger into her bed? Hmm, Mito-chan is probably right. I should definitely agree. Especially when such a woman asks for the opportunity to bear your child without far-reaching plans. In general, it's not hard to guess about the future. Alright, then I'll delight her tomorrow, and for now, can we have an hour to nap? I chuckled and pulled Uzumaki closer, throwing the blanket over us. Not so fast. Ouch! Removing her fist that jabbed into my side, I looked at Mito in surprise. Did you forget we still have training today? The red-haired beauty smiled too cheerfully. I barely restrained a pained grimace. It's not training, but rather an attempt to inflict injuries incompatible with life. Maybe a little later? I asked plaintively, really not wanting to fight against an S-rank Kunoichi without any restrictions on both sides. After each such session, I have to spend two hours healing wounds and bruises. The only consolation is that after strengthening the bones of my skeleton, serious fractures are very rare, and I cope very quickly with small bones like fingers. No slacking off. You're heading to the front soon, and any experience will come in handy there. Mito snapped harshly, jabbing me in the ribs again. All right, all right, I'm getting up. With a sigh, I slid off the bed, heading to the shower to freshen up and mentally prepare for hours of combat. Somehow, it's different with Uzumaki. And if you can hold out against me for more than half an hour without seals, you can count on a reward, Mito murmured as she slipped into the bathroom, clearly intending to sweeten the deal. Remembering the last reward, like this, I swallowed hard and tried to suppress the rush of blood to a very specific organ. And tomorrow I have to go to Senju's. Damn, I need to muster all my strength for this. With difficulty, pushing away from the table, I patted my noticeably enlarged belly with satisfaction, my usually cooks so much for dinner that even I have to make an effort to clear the plates. Thank you, it was delicious. I smiled at Saya. With a little effort, the clone I created started gathering dishes and carrying them to the sink. Enjoy your meal while you're still home, Ma said happily, pouring herbal tea from a pitcher. Waiting for her to finish, I got up from the chair and stretched with pleasure. Eating is good, but I have something else planned for today, and her presence is necessary. So, Kachan, let's not relax. Let's go to the training ground, I'll show you what you'll be doing in my absence besides working in the shop, considering that I've abandoned training with clones and redirected all their efforts to replenishing the stock of goods, trading will be possible for at least another six months after I leave. Saya was somewhat surprised by this statement, but didn't object, squinting with interest. Apparently, she remembered the moment I demonstrated the Raisingan. Well, I have something to surprise her with this time. I haven't shown her Chidori yet, and the variations that have recently started working out especially. Overall, compared to Taijutsu, Iriyajutsu, and Fuinjutsu, Ninjutsu is at a relatively average level for me, only saved by the amount of chakra used. Although I know almost a dozen techniques, only six of them are perfected. And the cloud of poison and the control of chakra's form and movement are not elemental. Like clones with a mystical hand. Maybe a miserable month won't change that, but new techniques of the village will definitely be useful against the Iwagakure shinobi even in an unworked form, and Ma will have even more reason to need my help and be distracted from unnecessary experiences for some time. Just in case, I even created a scroll where I sealed three clones with a solid chakra supply, so if necessary, or just missing, she can release them. And as a kind of indicator of my well-being, when the creator dies, all the Kage Bunshin created dissipate regardless of their distance from him. And I'll take Mito's gift to war, it'll come in handy. 
Arriving at the training ground, I thoroughly reinforced the barrier, and only then began to demonstrate new jutsu, having previously read Ma's brief introductory lecture. So, I'm going to demonstrate not one, but several new Raitan jutsu, designed exclusively for family use. The first and main among them is Chidori. You could say it's somewhat of a variation of Raisingan, but with a purely elemental component, but a similar principle. Raising my hand, I focused and began to concentrate lightning transform chakra in my hand. Although my control was at the level, it took me about 4 seconds to do this action. Basically, it's the same manipulation as Raisingan, but with Raitan, designed specifically for piercing powerful defenses based on Dotan techniques. Although it works pretty well against others too. With a quick strike to the wooden dummy, I demonstrated the hole created to Saya. Of course, it has immense penetrating power, but it comes with the drawbacks of all close combat techniques, plus it makes quite a loud sound, which eliminates stealthy use. So, it's ideal against strong but slow opponents. Or it can be used in conjunction with someone from our clan for greater efficiency. Also, one shouldn't forget the significant chakra consumption, even for me. Wow! Ma admired the hole that had appeared. Absorbing her admiration, I smirked complacently and continued the demonstration. Next, to mitigate some of these drawbacks, I've created the next technique, Chidori Iso. Taking out a chakra conducting kunai prepared in advance, I aimed the blade and with a couple of quick hand seals, almost instantly formed a 2 meter extension of the blade, piercing the dummy's head. Specifically, it's a variation with a weapon, slightly weaker and effective up to 5 meters, but even in this form, it consumes noticeably less chakra and allows for an unpleasant surprise for enemies. The third variation, Chidori Senban, is an area attack and effective at a distance. Stepping back a bit, I demonstrated a barrage of lightning needles raining down on a heavily battered dummy, finally finishing it off. Although weaker than the first two, the penetrating power of these Sanban is quite respectable and can be used against groups of enemies, serving as an excellent means to stop a finishing blow. The chakra cost is approximately on par with Chidori Iso. So, that covers purely offensive Chidori. Are there defensive ones too? Ma asked, somewhat recovering from her shock. Well yes, how could I not include those, I winked. Watch and be amazed. Slowly forming a series of seals, I enveloped myself in sparks of lightning that flickered across my entire body. Chidori Nagashi, defensive field of Raitan Chakra, protecting against this element and discharging upon contact. For obvious reasons, I won't demonstrate it. And maintaining it with my current control lasts only a few minutes. Like the others, its technique rank is solid A. So, that concludes the demonstration. Playfully bowing, I deactivated the barrier and eagerly looked at Saya, anticipating a storm of admiration. However, to my surprise, she was in complete awe. Hey, Kachan, snap out of it. I shook her shoulder when waving my hand didn't work. You know, Ryo, only the first two Hokage could boast of mass creation of various techniques, Saya informed me once she snapped out of her stupor. I even felt a bit uncomfortable from the sheer amount of admiration, pride, and something else that showed in her eyes. I wonder what her reaction would be if I showed her my achievements in shadow manipulation and chakra component work? Somehow, I feel it's better not to do that now, there would be too many shocks in one day. Anyway, it's up to you to study these while I'm away from home, I said, unrolling a pre-prepared scroll from my wrist and tossing it to her. There are also some Raisingan techniques listed below if you get bored. Burn the scroll afterward. You're my little genius, Saya shook her head, barely reaching up to pat me on the head. Small? Then what would you call big? I chuckled, obediently bowing and accepting the affection. And it's better to practice Chidori now while I'm still here, to timely heal the burns from unsuccessful attempts. Though your control over the Raitan is higher than mine, you might not need assistance. Considering that Ma never intended to abandon training with me, expanding her arsenal would benefit her and elevate her from being a middle-strength jonin, as she currently is, to the category of Kunoichi, whom any opponent must reckon with. In fact, her limited repertoire of elemental jutsu had hindered her promotion to a full-fledged jonin before the injury. Ignoring the long absence from practice, she could be placed at the upper B-rank level in the search book. 
And this is despite the fact that in my childhood, she barely reached the top of the C group. Training with Irionine works wonders, and if Ma had a chakra reserve one and a half times larger, she would have easily transitioned to A rank, alongside Leanly, considered one of the best in the elite Jonin group. They're the same age, after all. Victory! Ha ha, ha! Breathing heavily and ignoring the blood dripping from a rather unpleasant wound on my forehead, as well as the body moaning in pain, I still couldn't believe that I had managed to win a fight against Mito Uzumaki for the first time in my life. But the proof was right before my eyes, the red-haired beauty wrapped in a cocoon of golden chains made of Yang Chakra. Well, it was more due to surprise multiplied by a near-perfect knowledge of my capabilities, but the fact remains, I won. Maybe you could unwrap me now? Mito irritably distracted me from savoring the victory. Huh? Of course. Obeying my wish, the chains loosened and began retracting into the bracelets on my arms. There's no point in wasting chakra unnecessarily, I still need to heal. I must admit, it was somewhat unexpected and effective even against me, the Kunoichi shook her head slightly in surprise. Of course, such tactics won't work a second time, but now I'm sure you'll not only withstand serious opponents for some time but also seize the opportunity to escape before sustaining two heavy injuries or ambush with a similar outcome if the enemy underestimates me, I smirked, relieved as I flopped down on the ground and began treating numerous wounds as usual. Perhaps. By the way, how did you manage to release a dozen chains so quickly, considering not long ago your limit was two? Uzumaki asked interestedly, sitting down next to me and dabbing the blood off my face with a cloth. I don't know why, but recently my control has been increasing much faster than before, I shrugged, tending to a rather unpleasant puncture wound from Kunai right above my knee. What's strange is that I still have the same number of clones engaging in this training. Hmm, interesting. Mito pondered for a moment, while I returned to interrupted training. The only reason I can think of that fits your case is the balancing of energies produced in your source, Uzumaki suddenly said. Yin and Yang have reached a balanced equilibrium, gradually increasing your chakra control. And you've also become noticeably better at concealing your reserves recently. Balanced equilibrium? Is that even possible? I frowned. I have doubts about that, with my huge reserve, aiming for excellent control like Irionine is not something worth aiming for, just like everyone else in the clan. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.